100 billion US dollars, which is about uh, 1.2 trillion rand. In October last year, the inaugural investment conference uh, was uh, held and it attracted about 1,500 delegates drawn from both the global and the domestic investor community. They made a number of pledges and commitments to invest in the South African economy. Since that conference, uh, a number of positive steps have been taken, both to improve the investment environment uh, or uh, to commit uh, and commence uh, with actual uh, investment projects. I want to highlight just a few of these. On the policy front, since the last conference, a new policy on the release of Spectrum was presented, which will enable growth and expansion of digital services and help to bring down the price of data. A commitment to resolve challenges and problems with our tourist visa regime has been implemented, with a number of countries being given visa-free status, a new e-visa project uh, has been uh, completed and is due to be launched, and the extended birth certificate requirement for accompanying uh, minors has been removed as a requirement on tourists visiting South Africa. More recently, the new IRP for the supply of electricity has been finalized and gazetted, providing certainty at least on the uh, energy roadmap, the horizon, and uh, it includes opportunities on both the traditional as well as the green energy technologies side. Also since the last conference uh, and following the ratification by Parliament of the African Continental Free Trade Area uh, Agreement, the implementation phase of that important free trade agreement has commenced and it was officially launched, the imp implementation phase, in July this year. An agreement was reached with the United Kingdom on the terms uh, of trade between the UK and South Africa as well as a number of other SADC countries in the event that the UK exits the European Union without a withdrawal agreement to rebuild institutions and enable a more capable state. The new head of the NPA was appointed in December last year and the new SARS commissioner took office in May this year. Uh, a new Nigeria South Africa Ministerial Advisory Council on Trade, Industry and Investment was launched during President Buhari's recent state visit to South Africa and as part of government's drive to improve the investment climate and the ease of doing business, we're pioneering an e-government service and we'll be launching a biz portal, as it's called a business portal, to enable easier registration of companies, not only with the CIPC, but also SARS and BEE requirements. The recently released Global Competitiveness Report stated that South Africa's ranking has improved by seven places in the past 12 months, based on improvements in a number of areas like institutions, health and product markets, showing at the very least improved perceptions of the country. On the investment front, since the last conference, a number of projects have either been completed or construction work has started, and we'll be highlighting some of this uh, in the investment conference. Uh, they include factory expansions, uh, new mine development and so on. Let me just highlight a few of them. They include major investments like uh, investments in car production such as the Nissan uh, investment for the Navara project or the half a billion rand Toyota High Ace uh, investment that took place recently in Durban or the opening of a food processing plant in the OR Tambo uh, Special Economic Zone, or the completion of the Procter & Gamble production unit, or the opening of a new mobile phone production manufacturing plant in the Dube Trade Port, and many other projects like these. 
the results of these kind of efforts have seen an increase in the flow of foreign direct investment. Of course, we are geared towards both attracting foreign direct investment, but also, very importantly for us, uh, seeking to increase the flow and the commitment of domestic capital to new projects. Last year, South Africa registered the best foreign direct investment flow in five years, with new FDI flows of some 71 billion rand. And that was, that was in a year when global FDI uh, contracted. In the first six months of this year, uh, the Reserve Bank figures show that 38 billion rand of foreign direct, inflow, uh, of foreign direct investment flows were registered. So that's for a six-month period. In fact, if you take the period from 2015 to date, and excluding last year, which I've referred to, the six-month performance is better than the full-year performance of 2015, 2016, 2017. So these are helpful indicators. Of course, we need to do a lot more to be able to get the levels of growth that we need and to increase uh, employment job creation uh, on, uh, on scale. So this year's investment conference has five broad purposes. The first is it will be an opportunity for government and business to have a dialogue in the investment climate. It will be the biggest engagement by cabinet members with investors since the start of this administration. We expect more than half of cabinet to be present at the event, and a number of themes uh, reflect the key areas of focus in President Ramaphosa's State of the Nation address in June this year. Cabinet members would therefore be able to engage with investors both in bilaterals, we've set aside some time for these bilateral meetings, but also in a number of uh, breakaway sessions that uh, Trudy will be telling us about in a moment. The second purpose, if you like, of the investment conference, it's an opportunity for SA Inc., as it's called, to engage with the global investor community. We expect about uh, a quarter of the conference attendees uh, to be foreign investors or their representatives. Perhaps it will be a little bit higher than that. So local businesses, as well as regulators and government representatives, will be able to tell both the South African story, but also to share with the global investment community the opportunities that arise from the African continental free trade area. So that will be a signature theme of the investment conference. The third purpose is that a conference is an opportunity to provide delegates and the country with feedback, feedback on the implementation of the commitments made last year. I've referred to a few of these, and uh, we will be providing uh, visuals at the conference showing the kind of progress that we've made uh, with the pledges. The fourth uh, purpose will be that conference is an opportunity for investors to make new announcements and new pledges on the investment plans for the next five years. So similar to last year, it will also be uh, an opportunity for the country to see what is in the investment pipeline. And finally, the event will highlight uh, initiatives to improve the investment climate and the partnerships we seek to build. For example, we'll be relaunching the US South Africa Business Council uh, at the event, bringing together a number of uh, large uh, US businesses uh, with their South African counterparts and creating a forum where US South African businesses can engage and where they can interact uh, with governments. We'll also be uh, officially launching the Japan SA Business Council. It's an initiative that came out of President Ramaphosa's visit to Japan recently, 
and his meeting with Prime Minister Abe. It was agreed in the course of the discussions that we need an ongoing forum to facilitate deeper Japanese investment in the South African economy. And so the Council will be launched uh, at the investment conference. And we've made some progress with master plans over the last number of months. Some of that progress will be highlighted uh, and where appropriate some commitments will be signed at the, uh, at the conference. So what I've sought to do is to give a little bit of context to why the investment conference uh, was held initially last year. Share with you just very briefly because some of the more detailed ones will be done at the investment conference itself. We've got to keep something uh, that we can we can talk about there, and uh, and share with you uh, what we see as the specific purposes of the investment conference. So Trudy will be providing more detail on our state of readiness, our ability to switch on the button and say conference can open, and uh, and also on on some of the themes that we will be pursuing with the investment community. So thank you, uh, Sidwell. Over to you. Thank you, Minister. Trudy? Thank you, Sidwell. And good morning uh, to everyone in the room and also in joining us from Pretoria. As part um, of the investment mobilization work um, that we do as government, uh, preparations have been underway to prepare for the investment conference. As the minister mentioned, this will be held uh, from the 5th to the 7th of November at the Sandton Convention Center, as was the case um, last year. At, as we speak at the moment, we have just over 1,030 confirmed um, delegates who will be attending the conference. Um, and uh, we're quite close to um, the period where we're going to cut off registration. So we would urge um, that people um, who've been invited, it's per invitation, um, confirm um, their attendance before the 25th um, of this month. In terms of the key themes um, that we're trying to pursue at the conference, I think they can be summarized into three main areas. Um, the first case, uh, the first theme that the, uh, the minister has talked about extensively is positioning South Africa for investment to explain the value proposition for why investors, both domestic and international, would want to invest in the country. As part of the preparations, we have created um, a document that will outline that value proposition. As we did last year, there's a full document which gives you a fact base, um, generally, of investment opportunities, but there'll also be an executive summary that captures what differentiates South Africa and what makes it attractive as um, an, an investment um, destination. We will also be profiling key sectors in that document and also at the conference. So manufacturing, mining and infrastructure, technology, media and telecoms, agriculture and agro-processing, services including the creative economy and many other sectors. We would also be taking the opportunity to give some sense of the reforms that have been undertaken to support investment but also to support economic activity in general. The minister has touched on some of the key milestones um, of the sixth administration and also some um, that were undertaken um, last year to show that work that has been done to ad address the policy issues um, that sometimes constrain in, in investment. We would also be building um, on the social compacts um, that have been entered into, such as the Job Summit Agreement uh, for framework agreement, for instance, and giving feedback on how those um, initiatives are going and showing progress in terms of uh, the policy um, development. We'll also be talking about the government's measures that have been taken and also um, the various um, initiatives that have been done to stabilize entity government and also its state-owned entities. Um, the third category of um, uh, concepts that we'll be discussing at the conference is how South Africa partners uh, with investors when um, they engage in the country. So we would be talking about um, the master plans, for instance, and how they are, are deployed um, to support investments. We'll touch on some of the incentives um, that are available um, to investors. 
and we'll also talk about the partnerships um, that we've engaged in, including um, the public-private growth initiative, which has seen over 19 economic sectors get together to think about how they're going to accelerate um, their investment. We're also going to talk about how we support investors in terms of um, infrastructure, uh, in terms of our established manufacturing base and our sound regulatory framework. So those are the themes that we'll be exploring um, at the conference. In terms of the structure um, of the program, um, on the first day, we'll have some introductory events, um, like a cocktail event for all the delegates um, that will introduce uh, people to um, the activities and um, the proceedings for this year. The president will also host a dinner with selected investors, a subset of investors, um, to uh, engage with them uh, on, on the economy. On the 6th of November, the main day, the president will open the conference um, and give an overview of economic development, uh, but would also give us the, the uh, policy milestones um, that we mentioned earlier. Um, after that, we would have a plenary session where we talk about the risks and opportunities of investing in South Africa, and this would be led uh, by companies, um, high level, high profile investors and companies. Like last year, we would then have announcements um, that are made by companies. Uh, those companies would, would um, just give a snapshot of what the project is, how much they intend to invest, uh, what, what um, uh, the opportunity is that, that they see. We would then go into tea break, and after that we break into breakaway sessions. Now those breakaway sessions, of course, you know, the program um, is an evolving um, uh, uh, creature. We, we will finalize um, soon. But at the moment, we're thinking about highlighting some key sectors uh, in the economy that drive um, economic growth. I mentioned some of those sectors, but particularly with a focus on the fourth industrial revolution, um, looking at what it means for South Africa and Africa. We will look at mining and resources. We will look at infrastructure. We will look at agriculture, agro-processing. Uh, we'll also look at high growth sectors um, like tourism. We would also have some thematic areas. Um, that would uh, form part of the panels. So we, uh, under consideration is uh, a panel that would look at government business relations uh, and how um, those um, have progressed um, over the, the past few months and years. Uh, we would look at impact investing as a theme, investing in the social and the green economy, for instance, and what that means for emerging um, opportunities. And we're also looking um, at entrepreneurship and innovation um, as a cross-cutting theme. So that gives you just a sense of the kinds of panels um, that we'll be looking at. Uh, we'll have professional moderators who will be anchoring the sessions, but in each um, breakaway there will be a minister uh, who's able to give, at, at least one minister, who's able to engage and give the policy framework and also deal with questions um, that, that will arise. And of course, there'll also be companies and investors in those sectors and themes um, that demonstrate um, the investment case uh, for South Africa. The panels happen just before lunch and also after lunch um, in terms of our current thinking on the program. And then in the afternoon, we'd have a tea break and we would have <coughs> a plenary that then is forward looking and things about um, the continent and the country as the next um, growth opportunity. Um, so looking forward, um, there would also be announcements um, that are filtered throughout the day in the panels, in the breakaway sessions, but also in the afternoon. And it will conclude with a session that then looks at the journey ahead. What is the way forward? Of course, throughout the uh, program and also in the breakaway sessions, there would also be a reflection on last year's investment commitments and what um, the outcomes of those um, have been. This will all conclude with dinner in the evening, uh, once again, led by the president, uh, where he, he, he would uh, engage with investors and there would be networking and um, a keynote speaker that we can't quite uh, reveal at the moment, uh, but um, we, we would have somebody who's inspirational and who also um, um, sets um, the, the landscape for investment and economic growth in South Africa. Then on the 7th, um, the third day, you'll recall, some of you might recall that last year we had a walk 
Um, in Soweto, engaging with the community, visiting local and or engaging with local entrepreneurs in Soweto. We're going to maintain the same theme this year, um, but this time it will be more um, of a, um, um, a conference um, set up. So we'll be at the University of Johannesburg in Soweto. We will run a program where the president will open, but there will be a focus on the sh a showcase of entrepreneurship and innovation. So we will be talking not just entrepreneurs in Soweto, but in general, emerging entrepreneurs um, who are coming up with interesting ideas, interesting business models. Also talking to um, funders, um, impact investors, angel investors, venture capitalists, to understand how they experience um, this um, segment. It's interesting that some of the venture capitalists are also themselves new companies and small companies. So they will also bring um, that experience um, to bear. And then we would have presentations by selected entrepreneurs um, that will take us through their propositions and expose um, established investors and business to the new ideas um, that are emerging uh, in the market. And that will conclude uh, with lunch on day three. The Secretariat will also facilitate um, that on the sidelines of the conference, um, using um, some technology, using our app, um, to try and ensure that there is audience participation, uh, we get constant feedback from delegates, but that we also facilitate bilateral meetings uh, between delegates and ministers and also among conference um, delegates themselves so that uh, it becomes a, a very live and active um, engagement and a deal, um, you know, discussions around deals and opportunities um, are able to flourish in that environment. So that's where we are. As I say, we're um, almost ready to close um, registration. Invitations um, have gone out. Uh, we're close to filling um, our space in terms of our aspirations uh, for capacity this year. And um, we, you know, if the conference had to happen tomorrow, uh, we could pull it off um, quite confidently. So thank you. Thank you, Tunde. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll call one of our the main sponsors of the conference, Ms. Nolita Fakude, who is also the chair of Anglo-American and South African Company Group Director, to come and address us. Thank you, Chair, and um, good morning, colleagues. Honorable Minister, uh, leaders of government and business, members of the, the media, thank you very much for inviting Anglo-American to participate in this media briefing. Our roots run deep in South Africa, stretching back more than 100 years. It is in South Africa where our journey began in 1917. Since then, we have continued to be, in, to be an integral part of South Africa's development and growth. As the lead sponsor for the second South African Investment Conference, we see South Africa's success as an intrinsic part of our success. The 25th anniversary of South Africa's democracy is an opportune time to look ahead and reflect on how we can continue to build an inclusive, prosperous, and stronger South Africa together. Simply put, this significant milestone of our vibrant democracy reminds us that we certainly have more than 25 reasons to believe in South Africa's future. We are honored and proud to partner with government and key stakeholders towards achieving South Africa's developmental goals. Last year, we announced our commitment to investing 85 billion rands in sustaining, expanding, and extending the lives of our operations in South Africa over the next five years. The investment <coughs> includes the 30 billion rands Venetia underground project currently under development in Limpopo, the largest single investment in South Africa's mining industry in decades. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a well-known fact that South Africa is home to some of the world's most attractive mineral deposits. Anglo-American believes that our mining industry 
is well poised to attract a much needed investment to support job creation and economic growth. This, however, requires a concerted effort between the industry, government, and labor to promote investment and remove impediments that deter investments. As the largest mining company in South Africa, as well as the largest single employer, we have invested in five new mines over the last 10 years, close to 50 billion rands. And importantly, our mines are drivers of economic activity far beyond their direct impact. By way of example, in addition to the 47,000 people employed directly by Anglo-American, we have, through our renowned enterprise development program, Zimele, sustained more than 57,000 jobs by supporting over 2,500 SMEs. And looking ahead, Minister, we have committed ourselves to an ambitious goal to support job creation in South Africa by creating five jobs off-site for every one job we create in our operations by 2020. lives beyond the mine gate. It lives in the many regions of this country where we work with partners to build models of development that can empower communities to thrive long beyond the life of a mine. We have begun work on this through what we call the Collaborative Regional Development Group, which is based in Limpopo, and it's a pilot we're partnering with at Saro, CSIR, as well as the Premier of Limbopo. This innovative approach identifies socio-economic development opportunities with the most significant potential in a region through special planning and analysis. This work creates a catalyst for partnership with a broad range of partners, and by working through partnerships, we are better able to deliver on our commitment to driving long-term sustainable development in our host regions, far beyond the life of the mine. We wholeheartedly believe that if South Africa follows through positively in terms of policy reforms, we will be able to compete effectively with other mining jurisdictions and will be in a position to attract much needed investment for today, tomorrow, and the long term. This is precisely why an initiative like the South African Investment Conference is crucial. It provides a platform for us as business and government to actively promote South Africa as the preferred investment destination with abundant opportunities. Investors must believe that we have confidence in our industry, economy, and institutions if they are going to invest. We welcome and support the government's efforts in working to create a conducive environment to attract investments for South Africa through the Investment Conference and many other initiatives that have been mentioned earlier on. As lead sponsor, we look forward to seeing you all at the second South African Investment Conference, where some of my colleagues will share their insights on how we can unlock the potential <coughs> and innovative spirit of South Africa and her people. I believe that all of us in this room today will draw inspiration from the fact that our government is determined to build a thriving nation, one where all South Africans can truly realize their potential, and one where we, as patriots of this great country, can fulfill the promise of a better life for all. Thank you once again and have a good day. Thank you. We'll call now for the call. Carol Hall will briefly. I don't think it will be more than three minutes. The way you put it. Thank you, Sibyl. I won't be long. Honorable Minister Patel, Ms. Judy Mufaya, government representation or representatives, fellow sponsors, and members of the media. Vocom is proud to play its part 
launch in this important investment initiative as an official sponsor of South Africa Investment Conference 2019. We believe our support underscores our extreme optimism about South Africa's future, as well as the potential that exists when it comes to investment opportunities across a variety of industries. As many of, uh, of you know, Vodacom has been operating and investing in South Africa since the dawn of democracy, which means we're celebrating our 25th birthday. During this time, we've invested well in excess of 100 billion rand into what is now a world-class network, so that South Africans can enjoy a superior customer experience right across the country. At the 2018 South Africa Investment Conference, Vodacom pledged to invest billion in South Africa over the next five years. I am pleased to report that, that in the year ended March 2019, we invested over 9 billion in South Africa alone, and we will provide an update to the investment conference in terms of how much we have spent in April to June quarter. We will also announce spend in the first six months of the current financial year, and we release the interim results on the 11th of November. The commitments that government has made in recent times, and Minister Patel has mentioned this in terms of the assignment of spectrum, it gives us confidence in the future and the sustainability of, of South Africa's telecom sector. And while we remain committed to driving down the cost to communicate, new spectrum assignments will assist in accelerating declines in data prices, and it will ensure that more South Africans participate in the fourth industrial revolution by having access to data and broadband. The advent of 5G uh, will open up a world of possibilities when it comes to the creation of new industries. We pledge our unwavering support to President Cyril Ramaphosa, who has valiantly spearheaded and led the South Africa <coughs> Investment Conference. We encourage all South African businesses and individuals to pull together to make our collective future an even better one. Thank you very much. This partnership that government is already talking about is not only us, but we work with the private sector. Like Minister Patel is always stating that the focus of government is partnership with the private sector. Now we'll call our last one, Nolita from Nespas. Ah. <laughs> sponsors, government representatives, the media, ladies and gentlemen. At NASPAS, we are very encouraged um, to be at this briefing today. Um, it's almost exactly a year um, since last year's um, conference in October when uh, President Ramaphosa um, went on his investment drive to pay um, two trillion rand in new investments. Um, the announcement was welcomed, as you know, by many, um, but a lot of um, I think naysayers were also very concerned in terms of the ambition of the president's um, target. We all know that after a few days of lively conversations last year, um, government very successfully uh, managed the law to uh, um, fundraise 300 billion from the corporate sector. We are all very aware of the many challenges we face as a country, and as NASPERS, we recognize that this type of tenacity and planning as part of a larger reform plan is needed to give In this, it is the solutions approach and long-term view of the President's investment drive that has motivated us as NASPERS to get involved and to support the government in the raising um, the funding that is needed to take South Africa forward. This is, after all, what we do as NASPERS. We invest in and involve companies across the world in high growth markets. We are a technology investor and operator and one of the top 10 consumer internet companies in the world, competing 
through the likes of Facebook, Alphabet, and so on. We do, we do not only fund these tech investments, but we quite get our hands dirty as well, as we are a tech operator and an investor, and we work with local founders and help them to scale and grow their businesses. And our global scale has allowed and enabled us to help them to access new markets. Locally, if we come look closer to home, we see attractive opportunities in South Africa to develop this kind of online platform, and we're very encouraged in terms of progress that's been made in terms of spectrum. Um, and we also want to do the same thing here in South Africa as we've done elsewhere in the world, where our core focus has been on online classified, food delivery and payments and fintech for the long term. We also back earlier stage investments in new industries that's disrupted by tech, for example, in education, online travel, and health. Also in South Africa last year, as you might know, <coughs> we've made, it, made an uh, investment commitment of 3.2 billion of new investment over three years in ex existing SA businesses such as Takealot, who now employ 2,000 people, Mr. D, Superbulus, Property24, Auto, Auto Trader, Media24, OLF, and other Additionally, we've also started a new fund last year um, when we made the announcement at last year's conference that we're starting an early uh, tech business initiative called Nasper's Primary, and we're very proud that we've made our first investment in, in June. In a company called Sweep South, we've made a 30 million rand investment, and basically what that company does, it's an online cleaning um, services company, um, people know it as the Uber of online cleaning services, and basically what it does is it matches domestic helpers with people that need um, help um, in their homes. And we're very proud of that and of, of that investment. To date, Sweep South has employed 15,000 people. We will be making more investments um, over the next couple of months in um, Nasper's Farmery, particularly. We will be f um, focusing on funding more tech um, companies in South Africa. Our commitment at Nasper's to this year's investment commitment is to continue help the established confidence, confidence in the company's economy and to drive sustainable and inclusive growth through big picture investment strategies. We stand here today as a sustainable company that has grown internationally and has proved our potential in South Africa. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Please share your thoughts on our communication director in the space. Thank you. Thank you, Shabrita. Without any waste of time, colleagues, we'll start Thank you. 
differently. But didn't we um, skip a beat there? Um, uh, and, and we understand the global, the global context within uh, trying to get rid of coal-fired um, um, plants and the notion of the just transition and all of that. Are, 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 we, not, are we not, in a way, sort of um, curtailing potential investment uh, as more and more uh, international companies and firms and pension funds and sovereign funds that have, in a way, disinvest from coal? Critical. I mean, are, are, we, are we not curtailing ourselves there with, with, with the IRPs? Are just the, the, the contradictions that seem inevitable? Okay, Brandon. And last one, Mayor Perhaps, Tony, do you want to have the first crack and then I can give all the uh, any residual questions? Thanks, Minister. The first crack. Um, ESCA, I think, asked uh, what is the um, target for this year. I mean, I think it's important that we think about investment. First of all, the target is over a five-year period um, to reach uh, 1.2 uh, trillion uh, billion in new investment. And how you untangle uh, that it's new investment, of course, I think it's when the figures are coming out and you um, look at what the reserve bank, you know, the figures that Minister uh, referred to, for instance, in terms of um, reserve bank figures on investment, um, which shows um, an almost five-fold increase um, in investment over the past year. I think that is the ultimate um, measure uh, of the actual um, impact um, of, of these initiatives. Um, we also have to be mindful that investment is very lumpy. Uh, if you look at, you know, let's say, a 25-year trend uh, in terms of investment uh, amounts over the past 25 years, you'll see that it's not a smooth um, um, graph. It's actually the, there'll be very lumpy investments, uh, say, at, 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 you know, a capital uh, program at a mining firm uh, would come up with a, a very large investment. But of course, once they implement it uh, over a period of time, um, that tapers off. So you see very volatile data. So you can't necessarily expect that you would um, weakly divide the target uh, into five uh, and say, you know, this is what you should have if this is your five-year target. But I think it's important, as we'll see at the conference, that we do track the trends and we ensure that we're on the right path to meet that five-year uh, 1.2 trillion um, target. In terms um, of some of the policy initiatives um, that um, have been raised, I think I let Minister um, deal with uh, most of those. I mean, I think what's important is to understand that many of them are processes. Uh, it's not as if you issue um, a directive and then everything uh, immediately happens. The institutional um, frameworks have to um, come to, um, you know, they have to take on what has been um, um, announced and, and make it real. So the example of Spectrum, for instance, um, is a good one. Uh, you have a policy directive that clearly sets out uh, what the framework is for, for um, issuing high demand spectrum, which is very important from an investment perspective, um, that people understand how this process is going to be governed in terms of principles and frameworks. But ICASA has a responsibility to then take the board and, and run with it. And you might know the president has monthly meetings um, at NEDEC to track job summit commitments, and this was one of them. And at that meeting, CASA comes and they're held accountable and they share their timeline as to how they see the next um, few months unfolding in terms of their milestones. So the process keeps going, keeps running. Um, it's not a, a stop start, you know, it's issued and then you move on. Similarly, with mining charts, I think Minister Mantasha has been very clear that in his engagements with the Minerals Council and the industry, there's a lot, there's understanding on the key principles and agreement on what is necessary to get this industry going. There might be outstanding issues that have to be resolved, but from an investment perspective, what investors need to move forward, as you've heard uh, from Ms. Fakir, there is enough um, of, of guidance uh, to move on. Um, the IRP, I think you would have noted that in terms of the policy positions um, that govern um, that IRP, thinking through a just transition uh, is an important part of it. Um, and also that there is clear direction in terms of the allocations that have been given to various um, energy sources um, that we, we are mindful um, of where trends are going in terms of A, 
moving to better grades, um, better quality code, but also uh, in, in moving into other sources um, of generation. Um, in terms of Lamisa's question um, on load shedding, um, and that being a stumbling block to the investment proposition, I mean, no one can quibble with the idea that that is a significant constraint. Um, not long ago, South Africa used, we used to pride ourselves for our energy as, um, as um, an advantage uh, in terms of investment, and now we're in um, a very different position from those days. So there is concerted effort um, to deal with that. I think once again, we have to think about you know, the past 12 months um, as to the progress um, that's happened over that time. Um, there has been clear concerted effort by the National Treasury, by government, to think through the financial position of ESCO and to ensure um, that it remains a growing concern with the various injections, cash injections that have been um, given to it. But those cash injections did not come with a blank, were not a blank check. There were clear requirements in terms of reconfiguration um, that were imposed on the NTT to ensure that that money has impact. Um, the chief restructuring reconfiguration um, office um, has been set up. Um, there's work happening there to think about how to make um, that um, directive um, real. ESCOM itself um, has thought about an operational plan to improve um, its operations to ensure that things like conveyor belts, etc., um, we, we don't have incidents um, like that. So there's been many interventions to think about how we get um, ESCOM going over the past um, 18 months or so. Now, the important thing um, is that all of this is going to be consolidated into a holistic strategy, which will be released by the president, supported by the ministers, uh, in terms of how to resolve, um, how to stabilize the operations, the governance, but also um, the financial sustainability um, of ESCOM, and overlaid with that, um, situating it within the IRP and how it fits in into the evolution um, of the energy market. So that will be communicated in due course in terms of what that plan is. But you'd have seen over time that it brings together many um, initiatives, task teams um, that have been set up to um, think about um, this process. So yes, we are aware that you know in terms of the value proposition to investment energy um, is at the core of it. But there is clear movement um, to ensure that key decisions are communicated and a roadmap is communicated as to how we're going to get back to a position where ESCOM is not subject at this rate. I leave it at that. people. 
example, in, in relation to Japan and, and uh, the United States, the forums that we had in place were hard to use. We now see a renewed interest and appetite from foreign investors to engage us. We've seen it in the United States when the president initially was due to travel to Cuba. There was a very, very significant interest by American businesses. When uh, we decided to focus on investing challenges in Sardo, the uh, investor community that is a very possible side of the president Uh, as we've seen recently. 
uh, critically for him is, does the, the, the state have a plan? Do you know where you're heading to? And can we, if we commit the billions of rands that we, we need to now, uh, can we see a path forward where there will be a secure supply of energy? So we've diversified not only energy technologies, but we're also diversifying uh, where we draw energy from. So we, we've created in the uh, IRP clear windows for private sector investment in energy, as well as seeing the role for ESCOM in the new landscape. On the uh, 300 billion rand um, uh, that was pledged uh, last year, at the investment conference, we had to highlight what steps have been taken by the sponsors of <coughs> each of those pledges to show, in some cases, the project would be complete. I'll give an example of uh, a food processing plant who sells these ready uh, to market uh, food packs uh, that's uh, located in the lower Tambo social economic zone. So that's something that you can say the investment is complete. The building has been done, the machinery has been installed, production is, 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 is flowing. That's one kind of example. Another kind of example would be where a, a mine is, is currently under development or a factory is being built, where we will show the extent of construction work that is undertaken that prepares the company for that operation for production. A third example is where uh, the company has made uh, a pledge. It's now gone through the, the EIA, that's the environmental impact assessment. It's done its feasibility. It's got to bankability stage. It's raised the funds. It's ready to press the button. So depending on where you are, some projects have a long gestation period with a mine typically from the point where you say, I'm going to do it, to when you begin to sink your first shaft is quite a period. Others are quite quick from the time that you make the announcement to when you can see the production flowing. Say, for example, with factory expansion, uh, it's relatively, uh, relatively quick. So we will show a portfolio of these different examples to illustrate this. Of course, having said that, uh, we can't be complacent. We've got to do a lot more, because ultimately, the true test of the success of the investment conference is not just the pledges, but it's the speed with which we can get those commitments translated into fixed investment. And that will ultimately see eventually in the GDP figures. It's like planting the seeds, comes up to 240 billion a year versus the 300 billion you, you raised last year. Okay. okay, so just, I mean, just to clarify, you know, it's always been a 1.2 trillion target 
um, in new investment that had been announced by the president. Um, in the first um, investment conference, we got 300 uh, pledges, um, sorry, 300 billion, uh, not uh, made of 30 pledges, about 30 pledges that came up to 300 billion. Um, so that's, that, that's um, the outcome um, of, of that conference. That was um, a target uh, in terms of an annual target. I think I was at pains to explain earlier um, that if you look at the series for any country, it's never a smooth um, series where you get you know, um, 2% growth every year, um, like GDP, for instance. You'll find that the investment part is always the most volatile. You get 5% increase in one year, 10% decrease in another year. But what is giving us comfort is that if you look at the trends, the emerging trends, uh, if you look at the unted um, data that came out on FDI, if you look at reserve bank data on investment in general, you're seeing that the direction uh, is, is, in, is, in, is going in the right way and we want to sustain that. Uh, but the idea that we could have just a smooth uh, increase um, over the, the five years um, has just it never been realized. Um, so the 300, it, it's not that we're lowering the target, it's that you know perhaps one would argue that we overshot um, in, in that first year, nonetheless, we continually uh, want to do better and ensure that we're on the right trajectory. So I just want to be clear that what we have to look at is that five-year target as you know the ultimate measure. Um, and also just the ultimate measure in terms of the ambition. I think success, as, as the minister has mentioned, it also comes in the impact, impact of that investment. So what does it translate to uh, in terms of GDP growth? And you'll see in some of the investment themes that we're trying to push this year is to try to, uh, to um, highlight those sectors where we think that that investment will also have a high socioeconomic impact, which is, I suppose, what we're driving to um, ultimately. So um, you know, I hope that clarifies where the 300 fits into uh, the 1.2 billion. But we have not uh, moved the, the target at all. Tony has covered it well. Okay. Thank you very much, Minister and colleagues. We've come to the end of our briefing. Thank you. And we are all invited for tea. Thank you, colleagues. Yeah, if you have any further questions, the minutes will take one on one questions uh, to pass on to the minister. Uh, when it comes to tea, when it comes to tea, this is not a party.